Hello students, the question says a composite parallel plate capacitor is made up of a two different dielectric materials with a different thickness T1 and T2 as shown in the figure. The two different dielectric materials are separated by a conducting foil F. Maybe this is one dielectric material, this is another dielectric material. We have a conducting foil. Okay, so it is separated by conducting foil F. The voltage of the conducting foil is. So let us try to find what would be the voltage of this conducting foil. But as we keep solving this problem, we will realize we cannot tell the voltage of this conducting foil. We can only tell the potential difference between this conducting foil and the other point. So what do you mean by that? So uh, let us go for it. So I have taken a smaller version of this diagram. Let me call this upper plate as C1 and lower plate as C2. Let A be the area of these plates. So we can write C1 is equals to K epsilon naught A by D. K is nothing but a dielectric constant, which is also a relative one. So C1 equals to 3 epsilon naught. Let A be the area of the plate divided by T1 is 0 0.5. Right now, let us not go for units because not that much is required. So I can write 6 epsilon naught A. Okay, so let us try to find C2. C2 value is again K2 epsilon naught A by D. So 4 epsilon naught A by here D is 1 mm. So we'll get it as 4 epsilon naught A. So I can redraw this entire situation as we have something of 6 epsilon naught A and C1 and we have something of 4 epsilon naught A and let me call this as C2 and it is now connected to a 100 volt battery. And we know when two capacitance are in series, charge would be constant. So C1 comma C2 in series. What does it imply? It implies that Q is constant. If Q is constant, we can say Q is equals to CV since Q equals to CV voltage would be inversely proportional to capacitance. So using that logic, let us try to solve this. So I'll take it to the next one. So we can say V1, let me call this voltage across this is V1, voltage across this is V1. So V1 by V2 equals to C2 by C1. So if I do C2 by C1, I'll get 4 by 6, that is 2 by 3. They have to what is the total voltage? Total voltage must be equal to 100 because they are eating that 100 volt. So from this, we can find V1 equals to its corresponding ratio. This is called sum ratio method. In sum ratio method, we will find the corresponding ratio. So 2 divided by sum of the ratio, 2 plus 3 into the total value, that is 100. It's a mathematical way of solving the problem. 2 by 5 into 100. So we will get 40 volts. Like similarly, if you do it for V2, actually we know need substitute that 40 here, you'll get V2 equals to 60 volts. But I will just do a sum ratio method for this also. V2 equals to its corresponding one is 3. So 3 divided by 3 plus 2, 5 into 100. See, as you can see, again here also we got 60 volts. Now I will take this picture. We got V1 value as 40 volts and this one we got it as 60 volts. This is the potential difference across this. And let me select this point and let me call this is the potential of the foil. See, V is not voltage. V is the potential of the foil. But he's asking you, he's not asking you potential of the foil. If you see the question carefully, he's asking you the voltage of the conducting coil. We need potential difference, but based on this question, we cannot tell what is the potential difference. He should have given, we will assume it now. So let us assume this point is given as grounded. This would be the correct question. If anywhere some grounding or anything is given to us, only then we would be able to solve this. So then we can say 
then can't we solve for the given question? Actually, we cannot exactly solve for the given question unless the grounding symbol is given to us. So assuming this new diagram, we can say V foil minus, so whatever is this, V foil minus zero is equals to 60. So from this V foil would be equal to 60. That's what we can tell. Or else we can only tell this is 40 volts, this is 60 volts, and we cannot solve it further. But what is the most important takeaway in this problem? The most important takeaway is distribution of voltage across the capacitors. Hope you understood how to solve this problem. Thank you.